Today I'm giving you a look at Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve 9 Lite software, specifically the built-in motion stabilization functionality, which I have found to work quite well where other solutions like Sony Vegas, Mocha, Final Cut, and even Mercalli fail to deliver. Resolve has the ability to easily remove motion tracking points from consideration when analyzing footage, which makes it simpler and more effective to use. This is pretty awesome, because DaVinci Resolve Lite 9 is not only better at motion stabilization, but it is also completely free and available for download directly from the Blackmagic Design website. Check the YouTube video information for the link. Here's the clip we'll be stabilizing. It's not terrible, but there is enough motion that we'll be able to see a difference between the unaltered clip and the results from Resolve. Notice how little the subject appears to move. This will be important later on. First, I'll open up my project. Load a clip in the media pool. Then go directly to the color tool set. Next, I'll add a new serial node that I can use for my stabilization node. Next, I'll select the tracker function and make sure it's set to stabilizer instead of window because I want to stabilize the entire frame. Only select the types of movement you want to be analyzed. In this case, I know that there are no zooms or rotation in the clip I've loaded, and I only want to analyze the pans and tilts resulting from the camera being handheld. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to use interactive mode just yet. I want to show what happens when you include bad points for analysis first. Next, I'll just press the track forward button and let Resolve go to work. This is a single GPU system, so it runs a bit slow. Not really much slower than most other solutions, but with an additional GPU, it would run in real time. Here is the plot that Resolve is creating based on the data from the points it has chosen to analyze in the frame. And here we can see the point overlay as tiny white crosshairs directly on top of the clip being analyzed. One thing to note is that the subject, Nato Khalif, is also being analyzed for the purposes of motion stabilization. When the analysis is complete, we'll see why this can be problematic. Now that analysis is complete, we have to tell the viewer to zoom and select Stabilize to show what the final output will look like. Post motion stabilization works by cropping the footage to hide the adjustments to the size and position of the frame within the specified workspace. We have to zoom in to see the result. Notice that there is an odd sway to the resulting stabilization. This sway is caused by the data points that were being tracked on the subject. All of his movements within the frame were being used as input. This is easily fixed with Resolve by using the interactive mode that I turned off earlier. In interactive mode, we can simply select the bad tracking points and delete them from consideration in the stabilization track. Make sure you select all of the bad tracking points before you press delete. Now, just run the track again the same way, and wait for the result. I have sped up this process to keep from boring you to death, but as I stated earlier, a secondary GPU would make this step run in real time, or even faster. Now that the track is complete, we can see the difference. The stabilized result is rock steady without the swaying that was caused by the bad tracking points on the subject's face and body. There are also controls to tweak how tight and smooth the track is, but I believe this shows just how good DaVinci Resolve is with motion stabilization without tweaking. From here you can either add individual power windows for the purposes of tweaking color grading for individual components of the frame, or simply deliver or render your results for use in your Sony Vegas project. Thanks for watching.